Hi folks. In this video, I will briefly present the main points of the autonomy article by Joel J. Kupperman. Kupperman's thesis is that teachers should not advocate for the controversial, uh, sorry, should not advocate for controversial contemporary issues in the classroom except in some cases. By advocacy, he means a teacher presenting a view of his or her own in a way that might be persuasive to students. The author outlines some assumptions about the aims of higher education in order to make his points. Higher education should give us graduates who can think, excuse me, think for themselves on contemporary controversial issues. Many students come to college and expect to receive the right answers to questions that they can turn around and repeat back on tests to their instructors. This is dismaying to instructors because many of them believe that higher education should be about students thinking for themselves. When professors present two or more sides of an issue and make them both sound compelling, students can understandably think, uh, students can understandably begin to think that there are no right answers, and that conflicting controversial perspectives are equally valid. This leads to relativism about any number of issues. Relativism, relativism is the view that there are no right answers. There are just people's opinions about them. And I can say that most professors are not adherent uh, are not adherents to relativism. Uh, most professors believe that there is truth out there, uh, independent of human observers, um, but there are some folks who think that truth is hard to get at, maybe impossible to get at, but I would say most professors, they're not relativists, but they may think that at least there are more, uh, there are better answers than others. I would say most professors think that. Otherwise, why would we be doing school? The ideal, Kupperman says, is a sophisticated balance where the student has, where the student who has arrived at a personal point of view is also able to appreciate opposing positions and entertain objections to his or her own point of view. He mentions an exercise that he gives to students whereby they make an argument for or against a debatable question. He then grades the results based on clarity, coherence, and quality of argument. Since he keeps his own views out of play in the classroom, the hope is that students will begin to develop their own considered judgments on controversial issues and appreciate good arguments on views they disagree with. Kupperman makes a distinction between two kinds of autonomy, all or nothing autonomy and harder to judge autonomy. All or nothing autonomy refers to the way rational persons make rational and moral decisions. This type is linked with responsibility. So we tend to hold people responsible for their actions if and only if we can regard them as autonomous, as in charge of their lives. The harder to judge sense of autonomy refers to how well someone can think for herself. In our day-to-day -day lives, we are subject to influences from our parents, our community, and the media. And even though we try to reject these influences, they will inevitably affect our thinking. Kupperman argues that to become more autonomous in major areas of one's life, one must know what one really thinks and choose what one really wants. It is the development of a self. The college years are very crucial times for this kind of development. Kupperman argues that the most obvious threats to the kind of autonomy, uh, this kind of autonomy involve coercion and advocacy in the classroom, even in subtle forms such as facial expressions can operate as a form of coercion. In the last section of the paper, the author presents objections to his view. The first objection is that in some cases, advocacy would be the right thing to do because some moral judgments about social policy can be said to be correct or right. Kupperman accepts the objection to the extent that he qualifies his thesis. Ad advocacy is usually unjustified, he says, 
but not always. Qualifying a thesis or qualifying a statement is giving uh, is allowing that it might not be true in all cases, or uh, you might need a sort of addendum onto it. So, uh, say uh, if I were to say lying is is wrong, lying is wrong. If I qualified that, I might say lying is almost always wrong, something of that effect. If both the evil and clear and present danger uh, it represents are great enough, advocacy is justified, according to Kupperman. In addition, pragmatically, advocacy is not usually an effective way of reaching people who are inclined to be on the other side of a contestable issue. Moreover, advocacy sets precedents such that a politicized university loses the respect of people who have open minds, and we want people to have open minds at a university. The second objection to Kupperman's thesis is that an ideal of neutrality can never be realized. While accepting this anti-realist stance, that there is no single ultimately definitive formulation of any factual issue, and so in this sense neutrality is impossible, he does maintain that the unjustifiability of advocacy in the classroom is still correct. The ideal, he says, is a reasonably fair presentation that stimulates students without putting them to sleep. I hope that this video has helped you to understand this interesting article. Thank you for your time and attention. And enjoy the picture.